Welcome to E2 Talks. It's a podcast where we chat about the English language landscape, talking about topics relevant to students like you. In this bonus episode, Jay is interviewed by Rob McLaughlin, who is the coordinator of English language programs at Bond University in Queensland, Australia. In this wide ranging and candid discussion, Rob investigates the beginning of E2 language, E2 school, and what the future holds for traditional English language schools. Hi, Jared. Thank you very much for welcoming to E2 Language. In no、Melbourne. problem. No problem. Fantastic to、my、be pleasure, here. My pleasure. My pleasure. So, my curiosity in coming down here to see you has been that、um, I first saw your name in a, an article describing your business and what you were doing. And、mm-hmm. at the time, my business partner and I were,、uh, I suppose, trying to do something similar, but really we didn't have the balls to go out and get the money and do it properly. So,、mm. um, that was the first thing. And then at the EA conference last year, I saw you talking briefly, and I came up to you and said, hello, and good on you. And so I'm very curious about the,、uh, I guess, about you and your story a bit, but also about the technology. And then, as we've discussed this morning briefly, your, the social mission,、mm-hmm. social possibilities. So、mm-hmm. maybe we could start by talking about how you got here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, balls is, is one thing, <laughs>、um, brains is the other. Heart, spirit, sweat.、Mm. <laughs> I think all the bodily effluvia comes into it, actually. <laughs>、um, how did I get here? So, I was an English language teacher overseas for quite a few years, doing this sort of I did the、mm. stint in South Korea.、Okay. I taught in Indonesia.、Um, then I came back to Melbourne as a 25 year old and、um, taught at an Alicost school for a very brief time before I was sacked from it, which is mm-hmm. interesting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And then I thought, <laughs> dare I ask why? <laughs>、uh, to, to be perfectly honest with you, I was incompetent.、Yeah. I was an incompetent English language、uh-huh. teacher. Is that, is that because you hadn't got the right training somewhere in Korea? Or? I, 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 di- I didn't understand language.、Okay. I didn't understand how to teach it.、Mm. I didn't understand the complexity of it.、Um, I just sort of bung, bumbled, bungled, bumbled my way you can through. You bungle and bumble at the same time. <laughs> Through you know, conversational English teaching overseas. Mm, mm, mm. And it, you know, that was a bit of a, a slap in the face when I got sacked.、Um, so I put my、um, nose to the grindstone and actually learned language, learned about it、okay. how properly. Did you, how did you do that?、Um, I had a mentor,、yeah. and he had training in、um, ancient languages. Um, and you know, ancient Greek and Hebrew and all sorts of stuff like that. So, and he pushed me into grammar and, and held my head under the water and said, You, you know, <laughs> tell, me, tell me the subject pronouns now. You know, and that was an interesting experience.、Uh, and then I just kept studying it, kept studying it. And Rob, you, you can probably, I think we've discussed this, you know, there's a number of English language teachers out there who do not understand mm. what they're doing. Mm. I was mm. one of them. Mm.、Um, I would say I was for a long time too. Yeah. So, yeah, sure. yeah. Yeah. As you say, you bumble through the first couple of years and、yeah. work out how to manage a classroom. Yeah,、oh, it's then, tough. Then you realize I don't know much. And then you either leave or you, as you say, or you knuckle down and, and, and work out what's going on,、yeah. which I'm still working out what's going on. Good. We should be always. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's bloody complicated. Yeah.、Um, Yeah, so then, then I found a, a really good job here in Melbourne, which is teaching refugees and newly arrived migrants.、Mm. And that was actually just beautiful because the two things came into it. One, I could actually, I sort of knew what I was doing with regards to language.、Um, and also, I was teaching in a classroom, I was teaching refugee youth. So, a classroom full of Burmese speakers and speakers of、uh, Dinka from South Sudan and、um, Somalis and Ethiopians and You know, Korean kids, and、mm. it was bloody awesome. It was so awesome. Iranians, and like, you know, just the sort of that actually taught me how to teach because I had to go right back to first principles because I had a classroom full of、uh, a lot of them were illiterate、mm. or certainly had very、mm. little education.、Mm. So I couldn't make any assumptions about what they knew、um, and, and, and to. Peel language right back to its most basic form to scaffold it from that actually,、mm. I think, made me a good teacher. I agree. I mean, I, I remember a similar experience going from teaching CAE to teaching beginners, and that、mm. was a big moment. 
uh, to, as you say, strip back everything. Oh. Back to its most basic elements. And um, yeah, and it was fun, of course. You can see yeah. big percentage improvements. Oh, it was wonderful. In the case of migrants, you're yeah. obviously there's a, you're changing their lives in a, yeah. in a big way. So. Yeah, but in doing that, I also, I also started to realise how futile it was in the classroom. And I'm going to say some pretty iconoclastic stuff here. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely futile. Uh-huh. Really, like, you know, some of these students have been sitting in those classrooms for three years and I think the progression that they'd made was largely from outside of the classroom, mm-hmm. inside the classroom. Uh, the prescriptive curriculum in the TAFE sector was was kind of absurd because it's vocational. Is that a says we thing? Yeah, that's C-S-W-E. right. That's right. We're talking about vocational training. When, yeah. when, when is language vocational? Plumbing, fine, I get it. It's like, can you fit this pipe to this bit of sink? Yes, mm, you can. Mm, no, you mm, can't. Mm. It's like I remember doing assessments for SESWI and it was like, can you use modal verb in this situation? And so I'd have to create these artificial scenarios where this student would have to use this certain modal verb. And I'm thinking, what the hell is going on here? Let alone I started to realise that me standing in the front of the classroom delivering this sort of broadcast lecture to 25 mm. students you know, how much vocabulary do they know? What do they know? What's their grammatical range? What's their accuracy? Um, the Ethiopians were better at this than the than the Arabic speakers and the and the South Sudanese speakers didn't have a written language and so doing writing with you know, it's just like I was like, This is this is it's not right. This is a mess. Right. So and having had that thought, what did you do then? Um so I sort of had this serendipitous encounter with a guy on a train one day. Um, I was studying Indonesian on my phone and he leant over and said, what are you studying? And I said, Indonesian. And he was the guy who happened to be um, the expert in ancient languages. <laughs> <laughs> so we started talking, we had a coffee and I said, listen, you know, this isn't working out. We've got to, um, wouldn't mind doing something online. I have no idea what it is. None of us knew what, what it was. It's like let's let's begin. So we so we began, and then for four years I sat in my bedroom and sort of mucked around by building grammar videos. We, right. We filmed in my share house in North Fitzroy these three hundred videos teaching grammar and built these sort of corresponding exercises into them. And, and what year was that? This was two thousand and five. Mm, so you're ahead of the game there. No, two thousand. Yeah, two, no, sorry, two thousand and ten. Two thousand and ten. Mm, two thousand and ten. Mm. Yeah, and then uh, the idea was that we would sell these things and, of course, nobody... We had a bunch of rocket scientists, um, brain surgeons, enjoy them. Um, <laughs> but we couldn't sell them. It was, it was not a marketable why, thing. Why? Because? Um, it, it, it was one part of, of language. Okay. Um, we didn't know anything about digital marketing. The whole business side of things is a, is a whole new dimension to this doesn't matter how good your product is if, if you can't sell it if you can't advertise it then you're screwed um yeah so that that's how it all that's how it all started yeah and then you decided at some point well if i'm going to go into this i need decent i need to build it properly and get some investment and yeah go that way that's right yeah so then the business side of things kicked in luckily i have a brother who um has an mba and he's into business and so he sort yeah. of mentored me a bit as well i've to be honest, I've read five business books in my life. Four of them were a complete waste of time. One of them was good. Mm-hmm. Which one was that? Um, Peter remember? Thiel, Zero to One. Oh, yeah, Peter Thiel. Extraordinary. Yeah, he's Great amazing. Book. Yeah. I haven't read it, but I know of him. Very, very smart guy. It's more philosophy in mm, a way than, okay. than business. Yeah, he's a controversial dude. Controversial dude, mm. but a, a brilliant guy, no mm, doubt. Mm. Um, yeah, so so we did this sort of tech startup y thing. We raised, a, I think we raised $900,000. Um, we got a CEO on board, uh, we rented some office space and then we sort of, um, had a serendipitous encounter with, um, Sol Nassi from Cambridge Language Assessment. He okay. came out to Australia. They were looking at tech startups in language space and he said, why don't you build an OET course? Because there was nothing for OET at right, that point. Right. So we started doing that. Yeah. All of a sudden we started making money. You know, the PayPal That's thing good. started wow. yeah, ticking okay. over and yeah. it's like, oh, wow. And then we went through this phenomenal process of becoming good at item writing and te- teaching tests. And mm. I taught myself OET, IELTS, PTE, TOEFL, 
and started teaching that. Wow. Started posting on YouTube, started building a YouTube following. Yeah. Now we've got 750,000 subscribers yeah, and we've okay. had 45 million views. Wow. Um, but, you know, just, just long process type stuff. Yeah. And then learning about business and, um, and luckily business is, to be honest, I don't think anyone should study business. I think it's a waste of time. I think it's a lateral thinking skills. Mm, mm. I think if you work from first principles of psychology and apply what works in your cognition to other people, mm, it usually, mm. and I, I also think the other part of business that you need to know is some statistics or, or how to run a science experiment because basically your business is a ongoing science experiment. Mm, <laughs> mm. So how have you kept up the learning of all that? Have you just been disciplined in, we didn't mention discipline earlier. Yeah. Today, but have you... Learning about business plan? stuff? Yeah. Yeah. You, you must have had discipline to learn about OET and IELTS and PT and that. So. Yeah. Yeah, one of my personality traits is I'm disciplined. I I grew up in the countryside, um, you know, get, get up, up and feed the, the wood, cows. Yeah, feed yeah, the sure. cows. And if you don't, you starve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm disciplined. Where did you grow up? Sorry. Uh, southwest Victoria. Oh, okay. A little town called Lavers Hill. Okay. We're not even in the town, just a real... Out in the bush. And the farmers, your family were there? Uh, surrounded by farms, mm, but okay. yeah. Um, yeah, so the discipline for business, it's, 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 business is like washing the dishes. It's just like, it's just something you have to do. Mm. And um, is there an art form to it? No, yeah, you can get better at washing the dishes, but it's like one of those things also where it's like, got to wash the bloody dishes, may as well enjoy this, put some music on, put your rubber gloves on, make this soap bubbles nice and <laughs> um but yeah i i keep my ear to the ground i i, I look at what other people are doing yeah um, we've hired very smart people so yeah. i've learned a lot from them yeah cool yeah hire smarter people than yourself is the old adage yeah yeah, yeah for sure yeah so when did you start the brandy to um, language um about so so about five years in mm. we started e2 language so <laughs> that's when you went out to market and said here we are yeah about that time yeah. This is what we've done up to now and this is what we're planning on. And That's give right. Us some money here. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yep. Um, and yep. was the market receptive to that? I mean, it's, you know, there's been a tech, there's been tech bubbles and booms and the dot com crash. So there's some people have been burnt probably by VC capital and that sort of thing. We didn't know. do it so much through venture capital. Okay. Actually, we, what we did is we, um, our current CEO was, yeah. Uh, was the um, ex-chairman of Credit Suisse Asia Pacific, private banking. Um, so Raising friends money was and his family, thing. Yeah, yeah. not my friends and family. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so the farmers of Victoria are not, supp <laughs> not, not supporting a, an ed tech startup. No, yeah. but um, he was incredibly helpful. So he could see that. the vision, obviously. Yeah, he saw something there. He saw mm. something. So he's now our CEO. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, no, he, he, he bought into the social vision as well. Yes. So, I mean, I've had ideas of social visions around mm. our space and how we can essentially make money from people who have it and then provide something free to those who don't yeah. Or, yeah. or very cheap. Um, yeah. Can you tell me a bit about that and what, yeah. how that looks for you? Yeah. So our social impact is, is enormous. Um, first of all, we help all these people pass their English language exams, yeah. which is great. Yeah. I think there's some ethics involved in that, which mm. are interesting. Like, you know, we, to be honest, you're a, you're a doctor in Iraq and you're trying to move countries. I mean, there's ethics involved in that. Is that a good thing? I don't know. In the end, with that sort of stuff, we think, well, it's up to the individual. Yes, it's not our call, yeah. Yeah, but that's about, the, that's about as dodgy as it gets here. Yeah, yeah. Um, most of the time we're helping people, yeah, to either stay in a country they want to stay in or, you know, I think it's definitely a good thing. I think we're moving, helping with mobility, um, et cetera. But the big social impact stuff that we're working on at the moment is um, we just built a new platform called E2 School. Yeah, you've just shown me that and I'm... What do you I've, think? Sorry? What do you think? Well, I find it's, I'm finding it a bit difficult to conceptualise at the moment, but mm -hmm. I, I think I get it. Okay. Um, yeah. So, and we talked about this, it's, it, we had this conversation and I'm not 100% clear, but the way I see it at the moment is that people will be able to be in a physical space together with some technology that's supporting their learning by, that's customised to them mm -hmm. and that the teacher might be in the room facilitating or supporting in some way. Yeah. But equally that that could be virtual classroom. Is, am, I, am I yeah. on the right yeah. track there? So, yeah, okay. I see three ways it can be used. Yeah, okay. um, 
One would just be purely self-study. So, okay. Yeah, yeah, on your phone, yeah. on your laptop, yeah. you're in Pakistan. Um, second way would be you're in Pakistan and you go to your local language school, which is digitized. It's mm -hmm. a digital language school. So still a bricks and mortar um, building, classrooms, etc. Basically a language school, but the curriculum is far different. The pedagogy is far different because the main way that you're learning is from the computer. Mm. And there's breakout rooms to do your communicative stuff. Yeah. Um, and there'll be live streams from Melbourne, for example, straight to... That, that city in Pakistan. So do you see yourselves being involved in the bricks and mortar, opening up physical campuses or something along those lines? No. No. I'd rather digitise other people's language schools, yeah. provide them with content, provide them with technology, get them to do it. Um, so partner up with institutions potentially. Yes, mm. precisely. Precisely. And to take the cost of curriculum and other costs associated with that out. Or textbooks in the class, um, textbooks are, are a ludicrous idea for language learning because they're not multimodal. They're, they're single, the text, basically they're good for teaching reading. That's about it. I mean, there's no listening. There's no assessment of grammar. There's certainly no pronunciation. Mm. There's no, I mean, vocabulary building is extremely limited. Yeah. Um, I, you know, that whole model of I'm trying to learn Indonesian from a textbook at the moment. It's it's okay, it's okay, but it lacks all of those features and it's bloody hard to stay motivated, especially if you're self-studying. Yeah, sure. So why are you learning Indonesian? Uh, just um, I, I lived there for a year when I was 20 and learned a bit of it, so I'm going back to... Mm. It's a nice language, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's not. It's beautiful. not supposed to be too difficult to learn, I don't know. but still, still, <laughs> It's still pretty tough, yeah. But no, I, I think classrooms are... You know, teachers do their best with a textbook, but come on, it's 2019, I mean, I, 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 <laughs> come on. I tend to agree with you. Yeah. I, I'd, I'd be happy to burn all the books. Mm. Um, my philosophy as a teacher is to be able to walk into a classroom with just a pen, basically, or, Great. you know, and be able to take them on a, on a journey that's, that's and where what they want to go. I, yeah. I hated the prescriptive curriculum mm, mm. and I hate I never taught from textbook because I just it felt like what's the point of me yeah yeah I, I get that I mean I'm having I've got my own little school and I'm able to do that there there's nice. no one prescribing anything which and I love that freedom yeah and I from what I've seen from my students and Paul my business partner students is that we're able to because we're able to do what we want we we have the right ethics in the beginning we want to mm. do the right thing so mm. that's you know, we're not. We're trying to help them pass their test, and that uh, we can add in more what we want. So, in fact, how that's turned out is that because we're dealing with this high stakes situation, mm. we are doing more sort of mindset training and some more psychology thrown in there, and we're dealing with people's confidence mm. and we're getting into how they perform mm -hmm. and behave in a situation and trying to that those behavioral uh, outcomes are important to us because, for example, uh, you know, you might teach a writing structure, for example, um, and then when you do a live mock test with students, they mm. revert back mm. to their original one and say, mm. well, what, now I see why you're back here again mm. and you didn't get the score that you needed because you're not doing that in the situation, you're reverting back yeah. and that's because you're stressed yeah. <laughs> or you're panicking or mm. there's a psychological element to that so yeah we've ended up dealing with a lot of that side of things as well yeah and that's been driven by um a performance management teacher that we've had in the past mm -hmm. that's taught well, he's changed my business partner's life paul's life if oh, you okay, had right. to. Wow. um and mine too so we've plugged in more of that which in our context which is Students would come to us and say, right, I've got my test in two weeks. Mm. <laughs> okay. So we're already dealing with people who have failed and panicking and they're under oh, pressure. It's, and it's intense. You know, and the, oh, it's intense. Yeah, so. Oh, there's... But that freedom is oh, important. And God. similarly on the um, on the grammar side, we've we'd actually taken an approach that was taught to us by a former boss of ours, mm -hmm. um, which is, I'd call it the syntax approach, really. We start from the base. What is a sentence? Mm -hmm. And then we build it up from there. So mm -hmm. we do get, we do use meta language. You mm -hmm. know? We, it's quite mechanical in that sense. Right. 
Um, so yeah, there's the, the freedom you have when you work for yourself, basically, and precisely you yeah. can, which is what you've done. You've looked at the system and the institution and said, "Well, I don't see that working." Yeah, and I, right. I have a similar view. Um, so it's interesting. So E2 School, you where are you at with that project? Yeah, it's early days. We've just yeah. launched literally a week ago. Um, we're already into revenue though. Cool. Um, one of the we talked about social impact briefly, but um. We're going for very low cost, inexpensive, and hopefully high volume. So, so E2 School is nine dollars a month. Yeah. Um, which you know, I think if you are in Pakistan, that's probably less than you'd pay for your local language school. I okay. assume. Yeah. Or about the same rate. Yeah. Um, and certainly for West, you know, countries with better economies, that's just totally inexpensive. So a bit of a Netflix type subscription. Yeah, we've got courses from level zero, absolute beginner, up to level three, which is a B two. Mm-hmm. Then we've got a course called Test Ready, which is like if you're stuck at your IELTS six, it's about building vocab and test strategy skills. Got a pronunciation course. Uh, got a grammar course. So it's one of the few websites in the world that actually incorporates all the different elements of English. Right. And you know that each element is, in and of itself, is. Big and Big difficult and, and scary, different. yeah. And a, and a discipline unto itself. And know? so for the $9 a month, a student will come along and pick and choose what they want? Or yeah. how, how do they do they make that decision or are you guiding them through that? Um, we have a placement test, which they can take immediately, which will give them an indication of their uh, score of their different skills. Um, but then, yeah, we'll eventually get to a point where we can recommend. And also we're starting to venture into... Um, first language interference stuff. So you come in in your Arabic. We know exactly what you need in terms of your pronunciation. We know what you need in terms of grammar, um, more than likely writing, stuff like that. So we're starting to get quite um, quite good with our diagnostic and um, smart systems, moving mm-hmm. smart systems, study pathways. What do you mean by that? Sorry. Recommending material for you personally because of X, Y, and Z. Right. Yeah. And I mean, we mentioned it earlier before we started this podcast, but the one of the advantages of technology is, of course, that it can provide this customization yes. through assessment and yes. then providing, filling the gaps, basically. Yeah, it's one thing to be teaching in a classroom, teaching EFL in a classroom in Korea, because the students are more than likely going to s- suffer from the same issues. But the mixed classrooms you get in Melbourne, for example, where you've got, you know, Colombians and mm, mm. Japanese and, whoa, I mean. They like the social experience oh, of meeting each other. Wonderful. But you're right, they have different issues. Some of the best experiences in my life have been studying languages in schools overseas. It's just mm. so fun and social mm, and mm, you make mm, great friends mm. and lovers. and <laughs> it's, a, it's a privilege, isn't it's it? It's amazing. But yeah. learning is a privilege, isn't yeah. it? You know? Yeah, yeah. Transforms us, and mm. the moment we stop, then that's it. That's you right. Yeah, it's, like, it's, a, it's a little civilization, the thing that keeps it keeps it all together, doesn't, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So at the moment, you're with E2 language. Uh-huh. You've got. I mean, you showed me some data before. You've got massive numbers of people signing up every yeah. day. Yeah. Where are they from? Um, yeah. So we're signing up about. Uh, what was it, between five and 8,000 people a week? It was a lot. Yeah, so about 1,000 people a day mm. signing up to E2 language test prep, mm-hmm. which, by the way, is a much smaller segment of the market compared to general English. So E2 school could potentially be 10 times, 100 times bigger. <laughs> um, India is a big country for us. Mm. It's our number one country. India and Indians living in other the diaspora, so Malaysia, Middle East, um, Philippines, get a lot of medical professionals from the Philippines, okay. nurses yep. doing the OET test. Yep. Singapore, Malaysia, UAE, Qatar, these countries. Are what about the C word, China? No, not much. The C yeah, word. so <laughs> that just came out probably a bit inappropriate. <laughs> no, I like it. It's funny. <laughs> but, um, um, I mean, uh, I have, uh, Paul and I have really not wasted, but we've tried to get into that market and mm. it's very, very challenging. Technology-wise, obviously, for a oh, start, okay. because you can't, yeah. They, they've built a wall around their yeah. technology and um, and yet yeah, other challenges of business culture and the way, the way they do things is quite different. We um, And my conclusion mm. in those missions, should we call them, mm. although I'm not a missionary, of course, but uh, was that um, they're 
um, the way that the IELTS training schools, for example, mm. do business is not, act, they don't actually want people to pass. Mm -hmm. I found that they, the teachers really don't know much, um, of course, with some exceptions, but on the whole, and they didn't actually, the institution didn't want their teachers to be too good because they'd have to pay them more. Mm -hmm. And that they, um, it was all upfront sales and wrong advice. And, mm -hmm. and, that, and my idea, of course, going there was, well, we can help these guys fix this and provide better uh, knowledge from the beginning. And in fact, this frustration, the whole frustration had come from doing uh, speaking assessments with Chinese students mm. who have finished their master's maybe in Australia and they walk out the room with a, a uh -huh. score that's, well, rubbish, good good for nothing. So they know all of that. And so I was trying to go back to the source, you see, and say, well, why are, the, why are these students not ready for this day? Why is their language proficiency so poor? when they've been through a, maybe a degree or a master's. And, mm. and I wanted to get back to the beginning. Well, someone in China's, they're preparing, or well, they prepare for tests, they don't teach them language proficiency. Mm. Can I go and affect that in some mm. way? And so that had been the basic mission. But in the end, I'd, it was frustrating because first of all, people come along, they, want, they just want you to give you all their knowledge and content for free. Mm. And then they're obviously going to rip you so off. So you actually went to China? Yeah, I've been a few times, yeah. Wow. Um, and, but I realised in the end, I'd spoken to people in government, uh, in the education department, I'd spoken to private um, IELTS institutions, IELTS training institutions. My conclusion was, sa sadly, these people are not interested in doing what I consider to be the right thing. Sure, yeah. And so... It was a bit of a, I've just thrown my hands up in the air, but, you know, why, well, why am I investing the energy in that when maybe I gave up too early? I don't know, but maybe, and I don't see it as a waste, of course. It's, it's all learning experiences and helps inform me what I'm doing today. Mm. So, mm. but that was my sort of China experience. So you, are you, the rest of the world's enough for you, potentially? Yeah, we mucked, we've mucked around. We, <laughs> we built a... Um, Chinese specific landing page on the website. Okay. And we've got to hire somebody to do marketing on Weibo and WeChat and cool. Yuku, et cetera. Yeah. Um, at the moment, we're seeing very little results. And so my thinking is our market, our big market, the market I want to get is India because it's just culturally, you know, talk about cricket with them, you know, it's, it's much more aligned, obviously, with the English colonialization and stuff. Mm. Um, they're just more receptive. Um, they're digitally literate. Um, not that Chinese aren't, but um, we've already got resonance there. Uh, of our 750,000 YouTube followers, vast number would be Indians, and the love that we get from the Indians is phenomenal. So I want to go and be a guru in India. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you mentioned we've talked about meditation before, so mm. you might, yeah, and you're going to India tomorrow, you mentioned. Yeah, so. I'm going tomorrow, yeah. There is some work involved, not, not just meditation. Week of, to, um, week of business and a week of R&R, &R, but no ashrams, no meditation. This right, time. okay. Yeah. What's that place <laughs> where they go up in the Himalayas? Rishikesh. Yeah, yeah. I'm going there. Right, okay. <laughs> yeah, I haven't been up there. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah okay. it's great, beautiful. So what are you going to do in India? Um, we're going, our, our company was selected um, by the Victorian state government for a trade mission to India for education technology. So we're going to the biggest edutech conference in Bangalore. Um, we'll exhibit there. I get to speak there. Um, we get to, they ferry us around. We meet politicians and investors and heads of school boards and stuff like that and just see what happens, It's going to be fantastic. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah. Good luck with that. Thank That's you. That's going to be uh, yeah. exciting. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. And so as far as the um, social mission goes, mm. the... The model is to provide value. Low cost, high quality education. Yeah. Yeah. What about the people who are pre language? I mean, I'm talking about the I'm I imagine and I could be wrong, but the the people in the villages sort of low education. How, yeah. do, you, how do you get to them? Because maybe nine bucks yeah. a week is yeah, yeah, it's the, there could be is there gonna be a pre free course, you know what I mean? To sort of well, Yeah, well that's we're thinking we're gonna make our level zero course free. Um, 
what we need to do at the moment, what we haven't done, is make our courses mobile and app friendly because they, these people don't have laptops, they have phones. Um, so as soon as we do do that, potentially making level zero free is, mm, a, is a good mm, start. Mm. Um, how we're making level zero is very interesting because what we're doing, I showed you, is yeah. we're actually reversing, the flipping the tables and we're building a beginner Polish course. And so we sit down every week and one of the, the girls in the office who's a content writer speaks Polish. So she's building this course and we sit there, learn Polish and go, good, 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 not good, need more vocab drilling. Okay, this didn't quite work. I don't get this. And so we're going th th through this whole process and what we've, we've, we're learning Polish. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, yeshem <laughs> shilne. Well done. That's, that's good Means pronunciation. I'm strong. <laughs> I'm strong, good. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds good. Issue, sounds like. authentic. Yeah. So that's um, what we, you know, what we want to do, Rob, is, yeah, you know, Duolingo has been widely criticized as basically its pedagogy relies on translation and gamification. Yeah. Right? That's it my wasn't experience built by, it as well. wasn't built by linguists. It wasn't no, built by language no. teachers. And I think I mentioned I did their, their English test, which I thought was appalling. <laughs> and I can see that that's built by someone who, yeah. I don't know, they're on the wrong track in my view. Yeah. But anyway, maybe they'll sort it out. So we want to build something that actually works. Cool. <laughs> and we might venture into other languages too. Yeah. But we'll try and get it right for English first. Yeah, sure, sure. What would the other, I suppose Spanish would be up there. Spanish. Mandarin maybe. Mandarin, Arabic, the big ones, I guess. Mm. Yeah. But it's, it's an interesting platform. But um, interestingly, uh, um, you, you saw the platform Learning Base. And, yeah. Um, yeah, tell me about that. Um, well, it's the infrastructure that E2 School sits on, and it's basically uh, a generic, uh, well, it, you could think of it like a language learning LMS, a purpose-built LMS to build and sell language courses. Um, you, I showed you the activity editor, mm, for example. Mm, what, it what? looks fantastic, yeah. I have to say. Yeah. It, it looked, because when, I mean, building your own software is fraught. Yes. And I've worked in a number of companies who have, uh, one in recruitment, one in education, who tried to build their own software and ended up just flushing a load of money down the toilet. Yep. Um, and they often end up clunky and unusable and horrible looking. But yours looks looks like it's been built by Apple. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it looked usable and friendly and nice. logical. Yep. And, and that's what we users, we simpletons need, you know. Tell me, tell me about you use Blackboard. Yeah, you Blackboard know, is used in... At Bond University, where is I it work. used by the English Language College? Well, it's part of the historical story there. That it's the answer is in short yes, but it needs to be done more. Right. And so, this has just been part of a political situation there, really, where the, the college itself is becoming more under the wing of the uni, so right. to speak. Yeah. And therefore, they have to fall in line with their assessment mm. policies and mm -hmm. systems, and the island system is part of that. Um, and in fact, the TESOL. Professor there, Beata Webb, um, has helped Blackboard develop the what their collaborative. It's called I think it's Collaborate, mm -hmm. and it's it's an online teaching tool. So mm -hmm. she's runs her. They run their classes through there. Yeah, they have students all around the world in a similar way that you do, and they run the TESOL Masters program through that. So um, I've been uh, with her, standing next to her when she's talking to the rest of our class, for example. Mm. And I've been a recipient. I've been a, am I a recipient? I've been a, a user on the other end. Mm -hmm. And it's good. There's, there's good functionality in there. Okay. Is that so for live streaming, basically, live yeah, classes? Yeah, cool. And a number of people, and they yeah. can ask questions in a little chat box. Yeah. And people stick their hand up. Nice. Um, so it, that shit, I, I like it. Okay. And in fact, I'd done my postgrad cert online about maybe 10 years ago, I forget. But that was at USQ and that was online and I never met anyone. But that was just really discussion forums mm. at that point. Mm -hmm. So this evolution seems to me to be very good yeah, um, and exciting. Yeah. Um, so, and the way that Bond structures its programs is there are online components. And they mm. also have intensive sessions where there's a three-day weekend and people fly in mm -hmm. and... That's the, that's the way they do things. It's it's impressive actually. But um, so, um, have you looked at Blackboard at all? I mean, it it would have been easier to buy a system, no? 
it, it, it would <laughs> have cheaper. been much easier to buy a system. Mm. Um, it wouldn't have allowed us to do anything close to what we've been able to build for language learning. Yeah, I'm impressed with your functionality. I'm yeah. really. Uh, like we've we've touched on the creative aspect of teaching and being able to uh, really do what you want for the people who are in front of you mm. to have that freedom. This seemed to me to be able to give you the technological tools to yes. to to make that um, palatable and yeah. fun and exciting and those yeah systems. yeah yeah precisely. So yeah, so yeah. is that roughly the goal there? Like that? Y yes. Now we sort of we've approached universities who are hamstrung and attached to the LMS and the, there's nothing, they're bureaucratically handcuffed to Moodle and, oh, mm. God, bloody Moodle. Anyway. <laughs> um, so we sort of, you know, we've left with our tail between our legs mm. thinking, you know, what a shame. Yeah. But, but, you know, what we're thinking is, you know, the universities, English language centres provide the education for the top, 1% of the 1% yeah, of the yeah, 1%, yeah, the kids yeah. who can afford to rent an apartment in Sydney and, you know, and good luck to them. There's yeah, going to be a constant right. stream of those kids coming through. But the education that we want to provide is for the 99.999%, which is obviously is a much bigger market, but we have to do it very yeah, differently. Lower margins. Because there's no yeah. sandstone buildings. And so this is a bit like, I forget the name of the book, but it described how Airbnb and Uber came to life. Right. Um... And so there are stories of disruption. There was one more, and I forget which one it was. But there are stories of disruption. And when I sort of looked at your story here, I thought that that's, I see you as a disruptor, obviously, and that yeah. that's, makes me very curious. Um, and when they, in, when you read their stories, they had, or uh, Uber, for example, had had similar conversations with taxi companies that existed. And yeah. Of course, yeah. they have totally undermined that system although there seems, still seem to be taxes everywhere but yeah. is that how you see your role or position if you like in the market uh no <laughs> i don't I, I don't think we'll disrupt english language centers okay. in in australia for example mm. because they're paying for a different thing mm. they're paying for an experience yeah they're paying to they're, of course they're paying to improve their english and to get into of course it's a different thing isn't it a whereas thing. a taxi ride is the same as an uber ride uh your product in fact is different to what they would get so it's i, I see similarities like I, I definitely think with technology if it's done right we can provide a far better service like uber does you know taxis were so wrong in so many ways yeah you know you sit in there it smells the meter ticks over in front of you, so you're thinking, oh, my God, this thing's expensive. You know, you have to pay with a card at the end. There's this awkward sort of financial transaction. It's just, you know, not pleasant. It's not. It's a, it's a, it's, it's, and they can drive past you. And they can drive past you, you, and they don't know where you're going. It's just, you know. Mm. So we're actually, I think, with the technology we have, we can provide the Uber type of, you know, mm. you get in, it's already paid for, yeah, the okay. driver knows where you're going, knows your name, you have a rating system, you know. All of this stuff we can do. And if you think about Uber, the problem that they solved was a problem of coordination, basically, and, and resource allocation. Okay, so here's the problem. I'm standing on the street. I need to get the other side of the city. Here's a guy driving around his car. He needs to make some money. He can pick me up and drive me. And the technology, all it does really is, is, connect, those two is connect those two people. So what we can do in E2 School and what we've done with this tutorial and live classes is connect someone who wants to learn English with a great English language teacher from Australia or Canada. So there's a coordination issue that we've solved there as part of a much larger puzzle that we've, mm, we're putting mm. together. Um, but no, I don't want to disrupt. No, at English lang university English language centres, they'll, they'll exist. They'll continue to exist. I think what we... The, we may start to disrupt Alicos schools mm. because we'll be able to reach those kids in Colombia and they won't have to spend six months. Right, they can come and do they can come straight an eight-week experience rather than a six months. Precisely. And save I really do a lot think we'll... Because yeah. I've spoken to students and I've spoken to education agents who yeah. said, oh, wow, you know, if you can decrease the time they have to spend in that Alicos school, that'd be phenomenal. But the agents wouldn't want to decrease the time, would they? That, yeah, well, yeah, might make a few enemies along the way. Yeah, that. well, it's likely. But yeah. such is life. But the, the, the people who we're aiming, 
we're not aiming to disrupt. I think that's the wrong motivation. We're yeah. aiming to provide yeah. to a lot of people yeah. who can't, who don't currently have access to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, um, what about on the assessment side? How do you? I mean, when I went out on my own, essentially, my and was doing a lot of my business built just from doing one-to-one teaching and the, the word spread, basically. And um, mm-hmm. I found the key to that success there was. A very precise analysis of, mm. but mostly people were coming with their writing. Sometimes mm-hmm. speaking, it's mostly productive skills. Yeah. Um, how do you? Uh, how can you offer the most precision in feedback of, mm. of writing? How? Yeah. So on ET language, we we give writing feedback. So a student will submit an IELTS writing task to through the system. Um, the teacher receives it on the back end of the system. There's a teacher login. Um, We've got the rubric set up and the rubric has auto-generated comments. So what the teacher does is copies and pastes the, into this. It's a very neat system. Um, provides corrective feedback to the essay, goes through, checks the criteria, mm. high, medium, mm. low, mm-hmm. or in mm-hmm. the IELTS from 8, 7, 6, 5. Mm-hmm. Um, it provides precise, cr- um, comprehensive written feedback, auto-generated. Mm-hmm. It takes the teacher very little time to do this. The student receives a very nice report card saying this is what you're doing right, this is what you're doing wrong. They can visually see that. And with recommendations to then book a one-on-one tutorial Mm, so they can sit mm, with the teacher mm. for 45 minutes and go through and go, all right, tell me about these complex sentences. Yeah, yeah, sure. So we're starting to get... Interesting, that's great. I mean, I had the... Or Paul and I had the frustration, I suppose, that to offer a marking writing service, which we knew there's a massive market for, Mm. to do it in a cost-efficient way was... yeah. Well, for us, because we have we live in Australia, we mm. we pay Australian prices and taxes, and therefore we need to yeah. earn X amount an hour. Yeah, and that that wasn't worth our time, honestly. Sure. So yeah. you've essentially created a solution to that problem. Yeah, we've marked about forty thousand submissions. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And as I said to you before, that's that's a lot of data. Yes. And um, yeah, hopefully there'll be some opportunity for you guys to analyze that at some point and add value back in another way through research well, or commentary or we've got enough graded submissions there that we could possibly train our own writing algorithm a big task obviously but we've got the brains yeah. with our programming team to potentially do that the pte test is marked by a computer isn't it mm-hmm. yeah the writing as well yeah what's your view on that i have mixed views obviously uh, in fact, I remember, yes. sorry, uh, 2008, yeah. I think it was, I was the DOS at a school in Surfers Paradise and Pearson invited us to this hotel room and mm. said, this is what we're doing. We're building this AI that's going to be able to analyse <laughs> language. Okay, brilliant. Yeah. And this is, a, you know, it's <laughs> 10 years ago. And yeah. You can imagine the scepticism in the room it was like, really? <laughs> yeah. And a lot's happened in 10 years, obviously. Mm. But, um, do you... Do you I mean, I actually, I don't have any uh, knowledge really about how that's done. Do you mm. think it works or if it's... I went to a conference in Malaysia, a PT master training, and we okay. met Bill cool. Bonk, who's the brains behind right. the, okay. the writing algorithm. Um, I need to study it more. I, I, mm. I don't think I have anything intelligent to say about it. No, okay. Um, it's complicated. It is. Um, I, does, does it work? Um we're currently doing a concordance study where comparing IELTS academic scores to PT academic scores. Mm, interesting. So that the results of that will be quite revealing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's accurate. I do think it's accurate. Is cool. it? I mean, who's to be? The, the thing that I love about PT academic is it's only going to get better. Yeah. The thing about IELTS academic and the human raters, it's not going to get any better. Not much. No. Not That's much. That's right. A single. But the, the, they, they, they do continuously improve, but n- not to that extent, not to that I think extent. we would say. Yeah, yeah we, we're making tiny incremental improvements in mm, IELTS, mm, but mm. PT can get so precise because there's so much data. You train because of the big machine. data and the, the AI learning, yeah. yeah. And is this a – so we, we when we um, first started talking about podcasts, you, we both listened to the Joe Rogan podcast and he is interested in AI and has had a number mm. of interesting guests on there. Um, discussing this, have you listened to some of those and gleaned anything from what they're saying? These 
AI dudes on there. Yeah, yeah, I've listened to a bit. Um, you know, there's the, you get the, the 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 pessimists who believe that like Elon Musk that think that AI will eventually Destroy ruin the, the world. world. Yeah. Um, you get the Neil deGrasse Tyson type of characters mm. who think it's so far off that it's not worth worrying about. Mm. Um, I think Lex Freeman was the other one, the guy from um, I think he's a Russian originally mm. from MIT, I think. Right. Yeah, and he had he had a good good thing to say. He, um, if, if I recall, he was pretty positive about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, 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 I I don't know. I don't know. Um, I I think in the language teaching and learning industry, I think it's a long way off. I mean, look, you're seeing little bits. I showed you a bit of learning base that does the pronunciation yeah. evaluation software. And that, f- frankly, that tool is amazing. Because yeah. you're you're empowering the student to fix themselves. Yeah, <laughs> precisely. So you Which got a awesome. little pronunciation teacher in the computer, yeah, basically saying, "Concentrate in your oh sound. You're not right. going to e. It's not e. It's oh." Yeah. So that's Fantastic. that's one little component. But they're struggling to do. They can do single words, phoneme level. Um, they can do sentence level, but without connected speech, without intonation, and it was an American accent. So, you know, you know, so you that's and I are screwed. <laughs> it's not going to happen anytime soon that no. AI is going to take over and be teaching kids language. Yeah. Plus, the other thing is we don't need it. It's not the so- we have the solution now, actually. The solution now is, is actually at our fingertips. And it's not technology. It's technology enabled, but it's actually good quality content from people who understand language, who can, who can take that mess of language, deconstruct it, scaffold it up and say so you're learning Polish or you're learning English yeah. and it's coming at you at the right time with the right yeah. number. Of, so even with the beginner Polish course that we're mucking around with, we've found that people can hold three to five words, new words at any given time. Even three, they struggle to learn three new adjectives in one sitting, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, a, it's... And how different would that be if they were in Poland? Like, you know, they walk out the door and... There it is. Yeah, yes, them. Some other, some, <laughs> some other words that I can't pronounce. Well, I've I lived in South Korea for two years and mm. picked in Seoul? up in Seoul and picked up almost no Korean. This is when I was incompetent. Um, so it, 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 when I lived in Indonesia, because I was actually I was teaching in Korea, so I wasn't studying the language. And when I was studying the language in Indonesia, it was great because there's the outside world and the application. But imagine if you know, you go to your language classroom in Poland, you learn Polish from the computer and it really does give you the right bits of information at the right time and in a way that you just progressively mm, understand mm, what's going on because mm. it's filtered and it's given you in little micro lessons mm. and then you go out into the outside world and somebody says, I am strong and you're like, oh, I get, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Hey, I'm learning it. I've got my three words exactly. now. Exactly. Um, what about the functionality within your the school or E2 language? Will you enable the students, like if you've got, let's say you've got a load of students who have signed up to do um, an IELTS speaking component, would you, can you pop them in a room together so they can practice nice. together? Yeah. Is that, yeah. is that anywhere on the Yeah, on the we're radar? building peer-to-peer at the moment. Yeah, okay. Yeah, especially for speaking partners. This is yeah. the big thing, everyone. Yes, I mean... Oh, yeah. There's a couple of IELTS Facebook pages I look at, and um, that seems to be a big thing. Who wants to be speaking? Who I need a speaking partner? Yeah, that's mm. that's that's fun. That's the application. That's great. Yeah, I think one of the challenges in there could be the safety aspect. You True. Know? Yeah. Because there's some unusual people out there. With Absolutely. Yeah, we need motives. to. Yeah. We need to create gatekeep that in some way. That. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that For could sure. be a. Yep. And safety is a big thing. These days, yeah, yep, for sure, which is good. Yeah, L- I mean, luckily we're dealing with adults and not children. So yeah, that's, a, that's right. That's a whole big difference. It is. Yeah. So, students in India, how, how does this work legally? I mean, in terms of you're in, you're a business and you in Australia and you follow law, the laws here. Mm. But then, if a student signs up, are they? Which law is governing what? Wow. Is that a is that an issue yet? Or? I have no idea. Ah, okay. No I suppose, idea. I mean, it's no different in the way that anyone can buy anything online. That's right. Yeah. Access Spotify or mm. your Netflix subscription. But Yeah, true. Yeah. That's right, of course. Yeah. It's no not idea. an issue. 
shouldn't be an issue though, should it? I don't think so. No, good. And um, what about for you personally? I mean, how long have you been on this mission? Ten years. Ten. Yeah. You look well. Do I? You do. <laughs> I mean, I, I, and one of the things um, I'm interested in is really how English language teachers um, can have a better life, mean, meaning not be saddled to an institution and be able to make reasonable money. As a breadwinner, um, I've found that I've had to work, I've had to have lots of jobs at the same sure. time. I've had to work super, super hard just to earn a reasonable yeah, wage. Yeah, and so I'm interested yeah. in, yeah. you know, how people can do what I think is the best job in the world. Yeah. And, and if they're good at it, be rewarded for that. Do you mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? So, um, but I, having stepped out of institutions for a while, um, now I'm back in, but no one says this is difficult. You know, we all look at entrepreneurs and we think, oh, they just have an idea and it all happens and it's this, you know what I mean? Yeah. And they miss out the grind. Oh. Tell, can you tell me a bit about that, about that journey? Grind. Well, yeah, and <laughs> how you don't, how your head doesn't fall off your shoulders sort of thing? Um, sure. So the grind is, is real. Like, you know, for five years I sat in my bedroom um, worked two to three days a week teaching the refugees. At one point I was so poor that I actually lived in public housing mm. um, because my income was, you know, I was poor. I was poor. And I, I ground, grinded. Um, Is it grind or ground? I don't, I don't know. know. Probably both. Both. Let's say both. Um, I continue to grind, actually. It's, yeah. it's still a thing. I just, I'm disciplined. I work, I work 10 hours a day, mm. um, every day, oh, six days a week. Mm. I have one day off. Mm. Um, interestingly, as the business has grown and we've, you know, our company is now at 60, 70 employees, wow. um, my responsibility has grown and as a result, I've needed to adapt. So I've, um, you know, I've got into, into a bit of the biohacking type stuff, you know, optimizing diet, optimizing sleep, um, optimizing exercise. Into, meditation you've talked about. Into meditation mm. now. You know, you sort of get to a point where you think, okay, well, it's getting intense. What am I going to do? It's like, all right, I need to stop doing this. Drinking alcohol, for example. Mm, mm. I really drink. Um, cool. Yeah, and then, okay, now I'll start meditating. <laughs> like, and that provides that almost escape from yeah. the grind. Yeah. And enables you to have a better perspective on what you're doing and... Yeah, precisely. I mean, I mean, there's 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 a hormonal stress thing happening, and you know, cortisol levels are rising. And yes. Meditation allows you to drop those back down, and yeah, and our brains function. are under such a barrage of information and often negativity, depending yeah, on which got, echo chambers you're living in. Well, yeah, there's a lot of information, you know, and the more this thing grows, so much information. Um, yeah, I did. That's that's a hard thing to deal with because it's like, you know, just answering emails. I get 100, 80 to 100 emails a day now. Wow. Um, and it's like, what do I do with these? Do I answer them on the spot? You know, um, lots of questions from people around the office, et cetera. But, but it's a, you know, it's a full on grind and I've sacrificed a lot, but it's, but I'm kind of addicted to it. Yeah. I was, you're buzzing. Are I you? love it. Yeah. Yeah. It makes cool. me buzz. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the time it makes me buzz. Yeah, that's right. It's never total Sometimes buzz, but <laughs> yeah, sure. So, I mean, we're all on the roller coaster. Yeah. But I, I think, and my experience is when I stepped into entrepreneurialism, the roller coaster got a bit scary. Yeah. And difficult at oh, times. It's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. So yeah, managing your mental health is important. Yeah. Doing my best. Yeah. Well, it's. <laughs> Even that there's no there's no end to that journey. I don't think that's right. there's no destination. That's it's right. just a moment to moment yep. awareness of uh, what you're thinking and how that's affecting your behaviour and your and yep. your body yep. as well. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Cool. Yeah. Well, Jared, um, thank you for cool. your time. Yeah. I really appreciate talking to you. And I know you're super busy and you're flying off to India tomorrow. So. Maybe we'll wrap it up here if, that, if that's okay. Cool. Thanks very much, Rob. Is there anything else you wanted? To, I mean, maybe you could give yourself a, a wrap and tell people how to, you know, access 
what yeah. you're doing. And yeah. Um, so you can check out e2language.com to see our test preparation website. And that's mm. where it all began. You can check out e2school.com for general English stuff. It's 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 not pretty. It's a bit clunky, but mm-hmm. feel free to log in and have a look. I think mm-hmm. it's got enormous potential. Mm. And if anyone wants to add me on LinkedIn, just search Jared Merlo and yeah, feel free to get in touch. Good stuff. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. No worries. Really pleasure. appreciate it. It's great to hear. Um, it's very, it's very inspirational actually, um, and very positive. Cool. Know? Yeah. And I think underlying it that the social aspect of what you're talking about is. That must be a big driver. It is. Yeah. Yeah. I think I mentioned before there's, you know, there's selfish drivers and there's selfless drivers. Yeah. And it's okay to yeah. be selfish. Yeah, yeah, you, you need to be a bit. Yeah, for, you sure. Do, for yeah. sure. Great. Thank you so much for your time. Pleasure. Cheers. Thanks, Rob. Thanks for listening to this bonus episode of E2 Talks. Remember to check out e2language.com for IELTS, PTE, OET, and TOEFL courses. And to check out e2school.com for general English language learning. Thanks.